People are talking about business software. They're talking about it here. They're talking about it here. Are you ready for these conversations? This is Conversational ERP. The goal of our course is to give you the professional vocabulary that you need to participate in and contribute to these business conversations. Let's begin. Lesson 6. What else might be included in ERP? Here is our map of our business and of our ERP system that we developed together back in Lesson 1. It's a good map and it shows all the major business processes we want to talk about, but it is by no means a complete map. There are lots of other different processes that we might need to support the business requirements of different industries. Consequently, there are lots of additional applications that we can activate in our ERP system, or additional modules, if you prefer that term. You will definitely run into some of these other processes in the course of your business conversations, so let's take a look at a few examples. In the manufacturing world, you'll hear the term Product Lifecycle Management, or PLM, especially in those industries where a lot of engineering or design work takes place. If you have designed or engineered a finished product in a computer-aided design tool, like AutoCAD, you can automatically import the bill of materials for that product directly into your ERP system. A good PLM system will keep all of your engineering data, including engineering diagrams, well organized and up to date. And, even better, a good PLM system will help you keep track of changes to the bill of material over time, using a control document called an Engineering Change Order, or ECO. This change control ensures that your plant transitions from one revision of a product to the next in an orderly fashion, and that they're always building the correct version of the finished product. In a wide array of industries, quality management is a critical function. Quality management helps you monitor your materials to make sure they are always free of defects and always fit for use. A good quality management system extends your materials database by storing specifications on what materials are acceptable and storing any results you record when you test your materials against those specifications. When would you test materials? Well, almost any time. You might test your materials when they arrive from suppliers, test your materials before you issue them to production, test your semi-finished goods during production to make sure they're within tolerances, and then test your finished goods at the very end of production. You might even test your finished goods again, just before you ship. The very best quality systems take all of this test data and provide analysis on what's going wrong, and then they help you define the actions you need to take to correct or prevent these defects from happening again. If your business stores materials in a warehouse, you might also want to use a warehouse management system, or WMS for short. You might be thinking, wait a minute, aren't my materials being tracked in the inventory system? And yes, they are, but your inventory system can only tell you how much inventory you have. It can't tell you exactly where all your inventory is, apart from saying it's somewhere in the warehouse. If you're looking for one part in a giant warehouse, that's not much help. You're going to need to be a little more specific. That's where warehouse management systems come in. A good WMS can help you track in which location every single item is stored at any time right down to the row, aisle, and bin location. And, since the WMS knows exactly where everything is, it can help you optimize the placement of inventory throughout the warehouse, so that you use the space available to you most effectively, and so that you use the warehouse labor available to you most efficiently. We'll talk more about warehouse management systems in a later lesson of this course. Many businesses also assume responsibility for shipping their products to customers. Depending on where their customers are located, this can range from operating a simple delivery truck to managing complex international logistics. But no matter where your customers are, logistics costs are vitally important. In fact, if not carefully managed, logistics costs can creep up on you and hurt your profitability. A transportation management system can help you execute all parts of your transportation process, from designing the routes to your customers, loading the trucks, booking delivery appointments at the customers, and tracking proof of delivery. A good TMS will let you manage multiple modes of transportation, including full and partial truckloads, rail shipments, ocean shipments, and any combination thereof. By the way, we've put the box on the customer side of our diagram, but you can use transportation management for inbound shipments from suppliers as well. What if your customers need help with your products after you sell them? 
you might need an after-sales service system. Suppose your business sells forklifts. Your customers would expect your products to come with some kind of warranty, and they'd expect you to come and repair their forklift if it broke down while under that warranty. You'd need some kind of repair work order to capture all of your costs of parts and labor and other expenses. But your customers might also recognize that any forklift downtime is costly to their business, and as a result, they might be prepared to pay you for a preventative maintenance program in which you'd send one of your technicians out once a month to tune up their forklift, replace anything that might break, change the oil, and generally keep the machine in good working order so that there are no unexpected breakdowns. You can manage all of this, the warranty for parts and labor, the repair work orders, the service plans, the technicians and their time, parts inventories and technicians' trucks, all of it with a good after-sales service system. Similarly, if you have your own equipment, for example in your own manufacturing plants, you're going to want to keep track of it and take care of it. You can use an enterprise asset management system to help you there. An EAM system helps you keep track of all of your equipment from an operational and maintenance perspective. You can set up your own internal maintenance plans with your own internal technicians or mechanics to help you issue your own internal work orders. An enterprise asset management system helps you make sure that all of your equipment is always in good working order. And if you want to track all of your equipment and all of your other assets as well from a financial perspective, you can use a fixed asset system. What's a fixed asset? It's any tangible item that you buy for your business that is unlikely to be converted back to cash in the near future. The best examples are property, plant, and equipment. Fixed assets are also called capital assets. As noted, they are typically intended for long-term use, and as such, you have to write them off over time, over their so-called useful life. If you have a machine that should last 10 years, you write off a portion of it every year for those 10 years. This annual write-off is called depreciation, and your fixed asset system will help you manage the appropriate depreciation for every single one of your fixed assets. If your business owns or manages a lot of property, you might consider using a real estate system. The fixed asset system will take care of financial matters like depreciation, but it won't help you manage your property. A real estate system can help you manage all the land, buildings, offices, common areas, and even rooms in your portfolio, and all of the lease and rental contracts and operations. The system will help you manage property maintenance, repairs, and even capital projects to develop your properties or build new ones. And lastly, you might also be interested in a treasury management system. What does the system manage? Your liquidity, also known as your working capital, also known as your cash. Remember, earlier in this course, we said that cash was like oxygen to a business. If you run out of oxygen, your body dies. If you run out of cash, your business dies. The number one concern of every CFO in every business is always, always, always liquidity slash working capital slash cash. A good treasury system will let you see where all of your cash is in whatever bank or currency and help you forecast your liquidity for the future so that your business is always able to do what it needs to do. So, in summary, if anyone ever asks you what else might be included in ERP, you can give them the examples from the previous slide. ERP can include any number of additional so-called modules to address the needs of a particular functional area or even a particular industry. By the way, these are by no means all of the additional modules. We only showed you nine, but there are many, many, many more. Thanks very much for watching. This concludes Lesson 6.